Over two million holes are dug in the roads and pavements of Britain every year. This one is to get down to a sewer, which runs all the way along the pavement there, one and a half metres deep. There have been reports of sewage leaking out of a manhole, and it's suspected that a sewer may have collapsed, causing a blockage. So they're digging a hole. Well, you might wonder how they can be so sure that they're going to find a sewer exactly underneath them where they're digging. Well, Mike, you're the supervising engineer. What's the answer? Quite simply, in this case, when the sewer was built, plans were produced which shows a sewer running down the footpath. And in this case, the plan was made how many years ago? The original plans were made 50 or 60 years ago. So we know where it is? We've got a very good idea, yes. But it isn't quite as simple as that, because it's not just sewers which could be down there. There's things like electricity cables, telephone cables, gas pipes and water mains. All the services which are officially known as public utilities. As well as needing to be quite sure of finding the sewer, the workmen also have to avoid accidentally finding something else. Damage to a telephone cable or water main could cause a great deal of inconvenience to householders. If an electricity cable or gas main were hit, there could also be considerable danger. The first thing we do before we dig any hole in the highway is to check with an electronic device the exact location of the existing pipes and cables. Is that something like a metal detector? Very similar, and it will give us an audible warning of where the pipes and cables are. Makes a bleep. That's correct, yes. The second thing we do, whenever there is time, is to tell the other utilities that we are going to dig the hole and ask them if they have any cables or pipes in this location. These are the sort of plans that we get back from the other utilities. In this case, we've got the electricity mains, we've got three low voltage cables. We've got a 10 inch gas main running through the footpath. Telephone cables and a six inch water main. So there is something down there? Yes. You'll have to be careful. Very careful, yes. The trouble with writing off to other services for information is that it can be extremely lengthy, perhaps up to six weeks before the answers come back. Requests for information have to go to each of the other utilities. They search their own records to see what pipes or cables are near the site of the proposed hole. Finding the right details among such a mass of information is time consuming. If there are pipes or cables nearby, the reply has to give precise details and will probably include a copy of a map. A search like this has to be done by all five utilities for every hole and with over two million dug in Great Britain each year, you can imagine the amount of paperwork that generates. So how could you improve the procedure? First of all, to get the information more quickly and second, to get it in a handier form, instead of on all these rather unmanageable bits of paper, to get it on one easy-to-read map. To find the answer, we first have to see how normal maps are made. So that's why I've come to the headquarters of the Ordnance Survey in Southampton. It's the task of the Ordnance Survey to map Great Britain and to keep that mapping up to date. And to do this, there are teams of surveyors working throughout the country. Here, they're surveying a new housing estate so that it can be included on a revised edition of the map. Surveyors measure heights and distances with instruments like this infrared theodolite. Where there's a large amount of ground to survey, they use aerial photography. The plane flies over the area to be photographed in a straight line. The camera mounted underneath takes a sequence of overlapping photographs. The process is repeated until the whole area is covered in a series of parallel runs. The photographs overlap, so pairs of them can be viewed on a stereoscopic machine. This allows the operator to trace round the shapes of buildings and other features and to measure their heights.
The end result is an outline map. Whether ground or air surveys have been used, the outline map has to be checked in the field. The surveyor adds the final detail. Then, back at base, he makes a neat version of it in pen. When the drawing's finished, it's sent back to headquarters. Now, it's what happens to that drawing before it's turned into a map that solves the problem of recording those pipes and cables below the ground. This is a completed drawing which has come in from surveyors in the field. As you can see, it's a perfect large-scale map. But there's only one of these, and the Ordnance Survey has to turn it into something from which many copies can be made for sale to the public. In the past, the main way of making a master for copying was like this. It's called scribing. A photographic negative of the drawing is made, then covered with a sheet of red plastic material. The draftsman scrapes away the plastic, following the lines he can see on the drawing underneath. But now the Ordnance Survey uses an electronic table like this and a device called a cursor. Inside the table, there's a grid of wires which sense where the cursor is, and not just the cursor, but the exact position of the dot in the middle of it. It does it in terms of how far the dot is from that edge and that edge. And what's recorded are numbers which are the coordinates of the point. A computer is then fed with those numbers, or digits, and that's why it's called digital mapping. Right, Sandy, I'd better get out of your way. First, Sandy goes through a procedure which tells the computer where the map has been placed on the table. Now she's got to digitise every single piece of detail on this map. Roads, buildings, fences and so on. For instance, she's going to record a building. So she goes to the list of features called a menu and selects rectangular building. Doing this tells the computer that the next points to be digitised will be corners. The computer records the coordinates. Selecting for the computer that the next two points will be the center and a point on the circumference of a circle. That's all the computer needs to record it. Once all the information's been digitized, and doing this would take a day and a half, say, then the computer can make a copy of the map by driving an automatic plotter. Automatic plotting is really the reverse of digitizing. The computer sends the four color pens to the right positions on the paper and draws out in full what has been digitized. So the map should be exactly the same as the original, unless Sandy's made any mistakes. To check it, the computer map is laid on top of the original surveyor's drawing. Here's the sort of mistake which can easily be made. One house in this row has not been digitized. Correcting the errors is done at an editing station. Chris calls up the whole map on his display unit. He can then window in to a smaller area which contains the site of the missing house. The computer draws this area at a much larger scale. Now the missing house can be put in. sort of mistakes happen because digitizing by hand needs a lot of concentration over a long period. That's why the Ordnance Survey is trying out automatic equipment, which will reduce the chances of human error. The operator positions a fine laser beam onto a feature in the surveyor's drawing, and the computer steers the beam round the feature, digitizing the coordinates as it goes. 
result can be seen on a VDU. More features, like this hut, are scanned and recorded all in one go. Once something is digitized, the equipment wipes it off the screen so that the operator knows what's left to do. Her job is still important. Sometimes she has to help the laser beam past points where lines meet. The computer doesn't know which way to go and calls for a decision from the operator. This is a slow business, but the system really comes into its own where there are long, continuous lines to follow. Set it going on a contour, for instance, a long line with no branches, and it's happy. The digitizing is faster and more reliable than by hand. When everything's correct, the map is stored here as a piece of magnetic tape. And one map takes just that amount of tape. A spool like this can hold hundreds of maps. To make ordinary paper maps is just as easy, because the presses use plates made from a computer plot. At the end of that process, you're left with printed maps, like these. And the only way you can tell them from conventional maps is by that symbol. And once the computer holds all that detail, it can then be used for the production of maps at smaller scales. The computer reinterprets the large-scale map data and draws smaller-scale maps without any loss of accuracy and with very little human intervention. But the most interesting advantage of digital mapping is the customers can actually buy their maps as computer tape. And that takes us back to the problem of those underground pipes and cables. The problem was to improve the method of exchanging information. Here in the West Midlands, a scheme is being tested in which a group of public utilities is using digital mapping. They've set up a central computer and bought the large-scale maps for the area, which are available on tape. The computer is connected to the offices of the five utilities by telephone lines. At the end of each telephone line is a workstation which can call up the maps held by the computer. But remember that every map, as it comes into a workstation like this, still only has surface details on it. What about our underground pipes and cables? Well, every workstation has a digitizer. Here, Carol is recording the position of a sewer with the cursor. Once it's digitized, the sewer appears superimposed on the electronic map, and it can be sent down the line to the computer. Now, all the other utilities can share that piece of information. In the same way, each utility can add its own records to the master maps. Technical support section. Hello, Tony. So, when an emergency happens... It collapses, it. The sewer, the sewer actually collapsed. And a repair has to be made at short notice. Yeah, um, you're going up there straight away to start digging? The computer comes into its own. Right. OK, then we'll get the information from the computer and we'll hope to get there at the same time as your gang. OK? Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Uh, Carol. We've got a collapsed sewer in Hagleyview Road. Uh, can we have the service information? Which map's it on? It's SO 9489 Northwest. Okay, okay then which services did you want? Uh, want them all. Uh, we're going to have to dig right across the path. So it's SO 9489 Northwest. That's it, yeah. Thanks. Carol calls up the right map, windows in, and adds the services. Now she windows right in for a close-up of the site where the hole will have to be dug. Right, OK, is that it? Yes, that's Hagley Road there. Yeah, and we've collapsed about there, so what other information have we got? Well, the sewer runs down the kerb and there's also electric, gas and telephone cables. All right, OK, 
Can we have a copy of that and I'll take it down? So within 20 minutes of a telephone call about, in this case, a collapsed sewer, someone's on his way to the site with a map of all the pipes and cables in the place where they're going to dig. That's only possible because of the joint use of a computerised database by all the utilities in the area. The great beauty of this computer is the way it can play around with maps. It can draw a map of any area with the feature that you're interested in right at the centre. Then you can increase the scale and keep on doing so by windowing in, although the map is only as good as the accuracy with which it was originally surveyed and digitised. And you can add as much or as little extra detail as you need. As well as the instant copier, the computer can drive a high-quality four-colour plotter, which takes just a little longer. So in the future, all the information about a hole like this could be available on one convenient map at a moment's notice, 24 hours a day. And it's the ease and speed of getting that information that could save costly and perhaps dangerous damage to pipes and cables. If a computer can produce a special map showing underground pipes and cables, perhaps there's no end to the possibilities for special maps. Perhaps one for a transport company showing the best way to take an extra wide load across the country. Perhaps one for planners wanting to site a new swimming pool showing the existing pools and how far they are from the local schools. Me, what I'd like at the moment would be a special map showing me where I could get the nearest cup of tea.